welcome back to this uh, video lecture series on nursing informatics. Work, uh, welcome back to this uh, playlist and for this uh, lecture discussion, we are our video lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, computer hardware and this is uh, based from one reference which I'll be putting on the uh, description section of this uh, video. And um, computer hardware is said to be the um, physical components of a computer and the computer is a machine as we all know that uses uh, electronic components and instructions also to the components the different languages the different systems the different processes involved in the um, instructions of these components and um, this machine is uh, used uh, or using electronic components and instruction to um, perform uh, such actions like uh, calculations, some repetitive and uh, repetitive, repetitive and complex procedures, text, uh, manipulation of data and signals, and other uh, tasks, especially the models right now in this uh, current uh, decade uh, it's the the, the uh, system performance are really getting complex okay? and uh, performs many new uh, processes okay? and uh, when you say computer hardware this also refers to the physical part of the computer and usually associated equipment like the peripherals and also includes input devices, output devices and of course the central unit of the computer. Okay, uh, usually computers are, are huge, others are really room sized, okay? huge sized computers and uh, they are usually used starting uh, or developed with uh, military uh, purposes, especially during the World War II, and right now we have it in our palms, okay, in our hands. And the basic hardware of a computer composes the computer's architecture, okay. And of course, it have uh, involved, as I have said. Uh, now it includes circuits, microchips, processors, different memories, different cards like sound cards, video cards, and other components that is considered to be essential in today's uh, computer functions. And yes, those are the different components um, of a computer and these are usually attached. Okay, These uh, components are attached to a um, component called the motherboard. A motherboard is a square or rectangular board with circuits in the, which it has the circuits in which it has uh, it, it is um, plugged okay, or are plugged into the main electronics of the uh, computer and these uh, devices uh, may be inside the computer case but are usually not part of the architecture so this includes the main storage devices, usually the internal hard drive, we have the cooling system, we have the modem, the Ethernet connections, opti uh, optical devices, the USB connectors or the universal serial bus connectors, and multi-format media and card readers. Okay, So these are usually not included in the architecture of a computer. And peripheral devices are the uh, input and output devices like the keyboards, such screens, uh, or the monitors, the mouse, the printer, fax, if such you have one, storage components also. Uh, examples are the external hard drives with uh, really large uh, storage, um, can go as high as several terabytes some the very famous thumb drives 
we also have the floppy disks I don't know if you have uh, encountered floppy disk we also have uh, CDs and of course we have the computer monitors as part of the peripheral devices and um, computer systems are usually composed of different component parts that uh, uh, enable the user to communicate with the computer okay? and um, the group of required and optimal hardware items are linked together to make up a computer system okay and this computer system is usually called configuration okay the computer system is called configuration and um, usually when computers are sold based from one reference many of the key components are placed inside a plastic or a box and uh, it can be uh, it is uh, typically seen from the outside the box uh, containing internal components such as the uh, keyboard the mouse of course the speakers the monitor and the printer some depending on the vendors okay uh, some some maybe some parts may be bought uh, separately okay? it depends on their packages depends on the vendors packages and uh, computers are now also very pervasive okay? very common very helpful very essential uh, in the healthcare industry uh, especially the uh, not only the hardware but also the develop uh, systems uh, softwares okay? or the applications are expected to continue to expand and uh, it improves the quality of healthcare while uh, at the same time reducing the cost which uh, if you have seen my videos on benefits and applications of nursing informatics uh, the, it was these benefits and applications were uh, discussed there so it's, it's related to this uh, statement and the application of computers also to healthcare is um, very wide very uh, assist uh, it has um, it is multi uh, purpose okay? it has a variety of, of use okay? so um, it can be used um, in different departments in the healthcare setting uh, from the diagnostic departments to the therapeutic applications of practitioners to um, what else? Um, different different sectors, different departments, different aspects of, of healthcare. Okay? Even those uh, which I um, referred to as healthcare related departments like billing yeah, okay? so, um, and other expenditures. Okay? Computers allow for distance uh, communication also and possibly uh, visualization with patients in remote areas just like what I've mentioned in my previous video we have your telehealth uh, medicine okay. and uh, usually this uh, none of these changes could have happened without uh, the advances in the information technology and also with the advancement or in the evolution of computers which we are going to also discuss in other uh, uh, virtual lecture series then what are the uh, uh, required hardware components of a computer so um, I believe my, my uh, audience right now has the uh, knowledge the foundation in computers since uh, this is usually tackled in either ele uh, both uh, elementary or even junior and senior high school so I will not really dwell on the discussion of different parts, its functions, and, and uh, try to relate it in the nursing, uh, in, in nursing informatics. So we have here the motherboard again. Okay, the motherboard is a thin, a flat sheet uh, made of a firm, uh, non-conducting material on which the internal components. The circuits, the chips, the slots of the computer are mounted. Okay, and um, this is usually um, 
uh, made up of a plastic material and the conduction of electricity lines are etched or soldered okay soldered into the bottom of the board okay uh, it's like a, a it's like welded okay in in the uh, sheet of uh, material the motherboard has uh, the motherboard has uh, holes in it which are perforations as the reference would uh, describe it uh, which in which components can be affixed so they can transmit data across the circuits of the motherboard i think i have a picture of a motherboard here which is if you're not really into science uh, computer science or uh, engineering computer engineering it may uh, be challenging on your part but for us which nurses as this field of informatics it's uh, somehow really nice to know and especially technologies like computers and laptops are very important right now okay. so one side looks like a maze of soldered uh, rails with sharp projections which are you see the attachments of uh, for the chips for the other components of the motherboard and usually this uh, motherboard contains the microchips and the wirings and slots for adding components um, this includes microchips of the CPU or the central processing unit of your computer and um, the design of the components of the mod on the motherboard and uh, especially of the CPU and either processors composes the foundation of the computer's architecture okay so motherboard is very 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 important part of the computer's hardware okay and uh, motherboards uh, the motherboard also has its storage uh, media which is called the memory okay which is called the memory okay so again the motherboard okay, another uh, description here Okay, that's an example of a motherboard so complex I think this is from ASUS okay so that's how a motherboard uh, looks like so memory okay the storage media of the motherboard we have uh, first uh, different types but, uh, of, of memory First, we have the read-only memory. This is considered to be the permanent, uh, it's a form of a permanent storage, uh, memory storage on the computer, and it carries instructions that allow the computer to be booted or started up, uh, and other essential machine instructions. Uh, it contains the programming uh, set by the manufacturer, and of course, uh, it cannot be changed by the user. Okay. only the manufacturer can modify it okay. uh, the data and programs in this uh, ROM or ROM okay, read only memory can only be read by the computer and cannot be erased or altered again by the users okay. um, effectively the programs are permanent okay. these are permanently etched permanently wired into the memory and the ROM usually generally contains the programs called the firmware okay uh, contains firmware or the programs they okay, used by the CPU okay to uh, sort of oversee the functioning the different functions of a computer okay so again that's firmware okay programs uh, contained in the ROM and uh, in microcomputers uh, a type of computer this may also include the software programs used to translate the computers um, high level programming languages into machine language or what we call the codes okay, which is also very common nowadays especially on younger people coding okay? uh, i don't know if you are aware of that or, or some have 
interest in it. Okay? One field of computer science coding. Okay? Just like what uh, uh, the game developers, if you're into, into games, uh, would uh, do. They also do coding of applications in your smartphones and computers. Okay? And this is very complex depending on your interest maybe and your learning. Okay? ROM again is uh, is a storage uh, not erased when the computer is also turned off. Okay, so it will not be deleted. Okay, the other one is your RAM or the random access memory. Uh, this refers to the working memory used for primary storage, and it's used as temporary storage compared to your ROM, which is permanent, and it's also known as the main memory. Our RAM can be accessed. Uh, used, changed, and written on repeatedly. Uh, RAM is the work area available to the CPU for all processing applications. And when a user clicks on a program uh, or the icon, um, the computer loads all or the part of the program into RAM. Okay, so it can be accessed very quickly. And it saves also work done through the programs until the user formally saves the work on the hard drive or other permanent storage. Uh, as you can see, for example, in the board, right, in your board processing, uh, there are random times that the application or the software will uh, automatically uh, save it. And uh, yes, really, this is the reason why you can still retrieve your latest uh, work when your um, when your computer have uh, accidentally shut down okay, then we have this cache okay it's a smaller form of ram okay and the purpose of this is to speed up processing okay, by storing frequently called items in a small rapid access memory location so for example you have uh, a very repetitive uh, program or application or icon that you um, perform or you um, assist in um, execute uh, cache okay, is um, usually used by the computer okay? and prior to the development of this all um, information is usually um, fetch from the hard drive and stored into the RAM but uh, to handle all the work the processor had to move information in and out of the RAM okay, for, uh, to and from the hard drive and in order to manage all the data from programs and their output but uh, given that the RAM is large and it takes a bit of searching to find just the pieces needed and is relatively slow okay uh, fetching from cache takes much less time from the RAM okay so uh, it's like it has a certain smaller uh, depot or storage uh, from the RAM and it has a separate maybe we can say substation sub storage okay or branch of RAM which you can easily access especially if the execution or the process is repetitive okay. so uh, keeping information that will be used frequently in cache uh, greatly reduces the amount of time needed to move data around among the memory locations and it's relatively an expensive way to increase the speed of the computer and you just um, really have to communicate or to ask your your vendor or your provider even increasing the memory uh, i know you are familiar with that the next we have the input and output devices again i will not be discussing thoroughly the different devices uh, maybe as i uh, discuss this you will be um, uh, assist, uh, refreshed by the different input and output uh, devices. So these devices allow the computer to receive information from the outside world, okay, from external uh, environment, external of the computer. And the most common input devices 
are the keyboard and the mouse okay? and others are commonly seen on nursing workstation including the touch screens, uh, the light pen, uh, voice and scanner. Okay? Uh, touch screen of course uh, depends on your facility, depends on your uh, equipment. Uh, usually what is stated here are based on western uh, countries since uh, we, we get also this one from western references. Uh, touchscreen is usually um, both input and output device okay? and um, when you use a touchscreen electronics allow the computer to sense okay, a particular part of the skin is pressed okay, or touch. I know some of uh, all of us maybe my audience are familiar with touchscreens especially if you have uh, touchscreen smartphones and I um, um, Presenting this, uh, saying that it has a similar, um, similar functionality with touch screens, and in this way, users input information into the computer by touching the screens uh, with the different parts of it. The touch screen displays information back to the user, and just as does uh, any computer monitor also. And a light pen is a device attached to the computer that has a special software that allows the computer um, to sense when the light pen is uh, focused particularly part of the screen okay? and it allows smaller screen location discrimination than that of a touch screen um, some devices also are used for security and uh, can detect uh, fingerprints I know this is also uh, familiar uh, because of the smartphones. We have fingerprints, we have um, facial recognitions, some have retinal prints or the eye prints, uh, voice uh, recognition also. Uh, it's input, uh, part of the input devices and very unique and very uh, amazing um, device. Then we also have input devices in healthcare. Okay, we have the electrodes placed on a patient's body, provide input into the computerized physiologic monitors. Um, oximetry, which is very famous right now, especially during the pandemic. Uh, oximetry device placed on a patient's finger, uses light sensor, which are sent to a computer and then interpreted as oxygen levels in the blood. Then on the other hand, we have your output devices. For the output devices, um, this allows a computer to report its results to external world and any equipment uh, that transfers um, any equipment that transfers the, the computer information into something that's readable to people and other machines also. Um, output can be in the form of text, uh, data files, sounds, graphics, videos, or signals to others, uh, other devices. The most obvious output device are the uh, monitors and the printers. Okay? Other commonly used output devices include storage devices such as the USB or your universal serial bus drive, okay? uh, which is also known as the thumb drive or the flash drive and we also have the optical media okay, we have, uh, referring to CDs uh, for output devices in the healthcare setting we have the heart monitors uh, as seen in the picture uh, this uh, displays the recording and the uh, display of uh, heart rhythm patterns which uh, can initiate alarms when certain conditions are met or unmet volumetric infusion pumps which is related to in intravenous therapy and this uh, can also display images or numbers in the screen and uh, fluids infused to the uh, patient's body are very accurate. Okay, then we have this different storage media. For the storage media um, we have the hard drive, 
eight sa peripheral that has very high speed and high density okay, capable of high density data uh, it's a very fast it has a very fast mean of storing and retrieving data as well as having large storage capacity in comparison with other types of storages the hard drive is the main uh, storage device of a computer and for small computers it is typically inside the case or box that houses CPR and other internal hardware okay? others have separate um, this is, um, purchase of the hard drives especially the external hard drives um, internal hard drive are not portable of course they are plugged in directly to the motherboard and the storage capacity of hard drives has increased over time a okay? larger memory are stored and um, it, it continues to, to expand okay? every few years or every if not every year like in 2014 most pieces are sold with terabytes and in 90s we have 500 megabytes okay. and other computers of course the larger ones which holds really large amount of data uh, and an unimaginable uh, huge number okay. you have this for example if you can see we have megabyte gigabyte terabyte petabyte exabyte zettabyte yottabyte so not how many zeros and commas are there Then you have the USB flash drive. Uh, it's a form of um, um, smaller removable uh, hard drive that is usually inserted in the USB port of a computer and it throws okay, its popularity and usage. So there are many names for it. It includes a pen drive, a diesel drive, packet drive, thumb drive, flash drive. Okay, and this device can store 4 to 16, 32 gigs, 64 gig, depending on your uh, purchase. And they can also um, have 128 gig. Uh, this is very small enough that this uh, can be kept uh, comfortably in pockets, in lanyards, necklace, or other um, s smaller spaces. And the device plugs into one of the computer's boxes or the USB ports instead of saving them into your internal hard drive or CD-ROM okay. um, what else it can be uh, um, very uh, it can it is very accessible okay. just don't lose it and be sure to easily find it then we have your optical media uh, the use of the CDs okay. this includes uh, CDs uh, DVDs and Blu-rays Okay, so technology uh, usually uh, this technology started around 1980s by Philips Corporation uh, CDRW or compact disc read write and uh, it evolved to a DVD which can hold longer files or bigger files uh, like uh, regular to our movie or longer and um, DVDs are too limited to handle high definition movies and um, this was changed into Blu-ray disc which can uh, uh, really um, uh, hold uh, 27 gigabytes of information which is equivalent to 2R HD movies okay? and uh, Blu-ray is derived from a blue color of laser that writes on the media and ray of the optical ray that reads the media which is again blue and color blue and add their other storage devices we have your floppy disk um, which is um, used during the 90s okay just used during the 90s no, known also as your diskettes okay. and back then it was very useful okay even though it holds only a small, or a small number or uh, amount of data. Okay? Nowadays, uh, you can store it even online. And okay? you have your cloud, which will be discussed also later. Okay? 
So we have your cloud storage. This is an extension of the online storage uh, service usually offered by different vendors. Data stored in the cloud is still stored on commercial computers called your servers. Okay? And if you have your Google account, your Yahoo account, and different um, uh, cloud uh, application softwares that uses clouds, I know you are familiar with this. Uh, and the cloud refers to a uh, to a um, uh, distributed system of many commercial network uh, servers that communicate through the internet okay, and work together so closely that they can essentially function as one large system. Uh, physically, uh, these uh, enormous numbers of servers uh, store uh, huge amounts also of data and usually are located into buildings which usually can go as big as warehouse, warehouses okay? and these are usually called uh, the data centers okay? multiple data centers also link with other data centers warehouse to warehouse which forms your cloud okay? um, the key factor in cloud storage is redundancy uh, to really uh, save accurately and uh, they should maintain number of copies of data. Okay. If one server in a data center becomes inoperable, the other copies can be can function, okay. and they can be retrieved one one from another server, so that the user may not experience any problem. Okay, so there are numerous vendors who offer individuals free cloud storage space for their personal files such as photos, music, I know you're familiar with that especially if you're for example storing it in your Google Drive, if you're storing it in your app, Apple or Android app cloud services. Okay, um, We also have Windows uh, clouds or Microsoft clouds okay, which these are very popular. Um, some could usually back up their backups also. Cloud storage is also far more secure and reliable than your personal hard drive, okay? even your flash drives, even your storage in the computers. Okay? So uh, that's why other people really store it or save it in their clouds. Okay? Not only because of the security, but also of the storage okay? uh, is very large compared to the limited ones offered by the physical uh, storage uh, devices that we have okay. and the cloud allows more data storage than most individuals need for personal use okay. so that's it for this uh, video lecture series on computer hardware uh, the second part will be on different lecture uh, video lectures um, and hope to see you there thank you for watching